And the main reason why he appears is to share loving reciprocations with his pure devotees. And in the material world, a lot of the time or invariably or predictably, uh, he's coming to give pleasure to the devotees in this world because they've been put into a state of displeasure by the non-devotees. This material world uh, can be basically divided into two classes of, of living entities or people. Those who are godly or want to be godly and those who are ungodly or influenced by the ungodly to not be godly and to also become ungodly. So the appearance of the half man, half lion incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead uh, is uh, perhaps the highest example of protection for the pure devotee and the ultimate answer to the not ungodly, ungodly is an atheist or asura or the word demon, one who has consciously decided to be very envious and hateful and angry at God and any idea that there is a God and any persons who claim or show any allegiance to what they think is an imaginary God, they become extremely angry. So this is a very wonderful pastime, which is told at length uh, in many of the Vedic scriptures uh, of which Srimad Bhagavatam is the chief, uh, practically one of the 12 cantos majority is the discussion, is the description of the appearance of Lord Nishringadev. So whether we're newcomers or we've been around for a while, just hearing about the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, as Hansa Rupa was saying, the ultimate triumph of good over evil is easily understandable and give great solace and happiness to anyone who is good at heart. So while we have a full room, I was asked to make one announcement that wasn't announced in all the other announcements, that we are having a permitted event at Times Square, specifically Father Duffy Square, which is 46th Street and 7th Avenue. Those of you from New York, that's where the steps for the tickets to the Broadway shows go up. And that'll be next Saturday. We were gonna have it yesterday on Lord Nishringa Dave's the eve of today to make a full weekend festival, but circumstances, the city changed our permit and it's next Saturday. And that will be a warm up for the same event in the same place on Friday, June 10th, the harbinger of the great Roth Yatra of Lord Jagannath, which will be the next day. So everybody, please come next Saturday, Father Duffy Square, 46th Street, 7th Avenue, It'll be very nice. And we have daily Harinam in New York City every day. Whether it's the merry month of May or the dark and dismal months of January and February, because Krishna, his enjoyment is always in a place where there's an uninterrupted festival. And that's what Krishna wants for each and every one of us. Every day, an uninterrupted festival. So the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, especially to benefit those who have no knowledge, information, or previous, at least recent, assets in pure devotional service, they get the opportunity to join the uninterrupted festival of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and experience a happiness that they've never experienced in this world and ultimately the happiness that they're seeking life after life, but frustrated in finding because real happiness can only be had in the association of Krishna. So you're actually, we're saying the seventh canto, but we should always, uh, the fifth canto, there's a very wonderful chapter, the residents of Jambadweep offer prayers and Prahlad Maharaj, as one of the great devotees there, is uh, 
praying to Lord Nishringadev. Yes. Prahlad Maharaj, the topmost devotee of the Lord, is a reservoir of all good qualities. His character and activities have delivered all the fallen members of his demoniac family. Lord Nishringa Dave is very dear to this exalted personality. Prahlad Maharaj offers his prayers. So we usually think that the children in our family, or we expect, uh, especially in bygone days, that the son is the heir apparent and should take up the mission, mood, mentality, aspirations, intentions of the father. So there's that saying, it's folly to be wise where ignorance is bliss. So Hiranyakashipu, as we will hear, was the greatest of all demoniac personalities. And we see in demoniac life that there's competition, who can be the greatest, who can be the most powerful, the most influential, the most rich, have the most facility for sense gratification. And that usually entails being fiercely competitive, ruthlessly diplomatic, and um, ultimately, in the worst cases, resorting to the most uh, gross and egregious crimes against humanity and uh, atrocious activities to obtain your goal. So Hiranyakashipu was such a personality. His firstborn and only son was a spotless, topmost Maha Bhagavat. That means a devotee on the highest platform. You can make a, a comparison that we could readily relate to. Say that the greatest demon, not Mother Mary and Joseph, but they give birth seemingly, but immaculate birth to Lord Jesus Christ. How upset they would be that they don't have another little demon to raise up, to take over the throne. And it reached such an extent that Hiranyakashipu, he tried to uh, brainwash, decondition, recondition Prahlad Maharaj. It was he came to the, to the point of understanding that he wasn't contaminated or influenced by bad pure devotee association from outside, but he was himself a pure devotee. And more than that, he converted all of the ministers and all the other Harani Kashipu's henchmen and cabinet members, all of their sons, he converted them to pure devotional service. At that point, he decided that he's personally going to kill his own son. Can you imagine? Your firstborn and only son, and because he doesn't follow your way of thinking, you're going to kill him. And it was at that point that Lord Nishringadev appeared. We'll hear more in due course. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Nishringadev, the source of all power. O Lord who possesses nails and teeth just like thunderbolts, Kindly vanquish our demon-like desires for fruit of activity in this material world. Please appear in our hearts and drive away our ignorance so that by your mercy, we may become fearless in the struggle for existence in this material world. So Hiranyakashipu, this demon, is the epitome of all demoniac and adverse to Krishna desires. So especially in this Kali Yuga, uh, it is very hard to separate individually uh, one's good nature from one's bad nature. Arjuna asked the question to Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, the third chapter, what is it that one is impelled to perform bad activities against one's will, seemingly even by force? So simply stated in short, it is the force of our previous uh, desires and activities done in ignorance of our real nature and our ultimate happiness. So upon receiving the knowledge of uh, actually what is, what is to be done, who we are, why we're here, what is the best use of our time, and using our good intelligence in right association to make the right choices, still 
those residual habits are there. So Pallad Maharaj is showing us how to pray to Lord Nishringadev, who's the ultimate killer of uh, the ultimate demon and demoniac desires to reside in our heart and rid us of these material desires. And beyond that, and uh, the spiritual masters and teachers and devotees, especially coming down from the most recent incarnation of Krishna, Lord Nishringadev, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, has given us the practice of how to overcome our lower desires and lower nature, but by becoming emissaries and messengers to give this most sublime knowledge and opportunity for the ultimate goal and happiness of life to others. May there be good fortune throughout the universe and may all envious persons be pacified. May all living entities become calm by practicing bhakti yoga. We have a little uh, little jingle that we say when we go and do Harinam at Atlantic Avenue. We're hoping to make everybody at Atlantic, uh, uh, everybody's antics at Atlantic all the less frantic. The Harinam is there today. May all living entities become calm by practicing bhakti yoga. For by accepting devotional service, they will think of each other's welfare. In this material world, especially in a place like New York City, everybody's thinking of their own welfare. What's best for me? But the spiritual world, it's the opposite. Everyone is so full in themselves that they simply want to think of what's best for others. That sets the stage for anandam buddhi vardhanam pratipadam purnat mitis vardhanam, an ever-increasing ocean of transcendental happiness, a type of transcendental competition where everyone is working to increase the happiness of others, ever escalating ad infinitum into glorious eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Therefore, let us all engage in the service of the Supreme Transcendence, Lord Sri Krishna, and always remain absorbed in thoughts of Him. The material world is full of envious persons, but if one frees himself of envy, he becomes liberal in his social dealings and can think of others' welfare. Anyone who takes up Krishna consciousness and engages himself completely in the service of the Lord, cleanses his mind of envy. Therefore, we should pray to Lord Nishringadev to sit in our hearts. We should pray, Bayer Nishringo, Ridayer Nishringo. We're saying in the prayer that Lord, Chaitan, Lord Nishringadev is within, without, he is in my heart. He is the supreme ashraya, the supreme shelter. Let Lord Nishringadev sit in the core of my heart, killing all my bad propensities. Let my mind become clean so that I may peacefully worship the Lord and bring peace to the entire world. If the Krishna consciousness movement spreads all over the world, and if by the grace of Krishna, everyone accepts it, the thinking of envious people will change. Everyone will think of the welfare of others. In material activities, everyone is envious of others. But in Krishna consciousness, no one is envious of anyone else. Everyone thinks of the welfare of others. By associating with persons for whom the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Mukunda, is all in all, one can hear of his powerful activities and soon come to understand them. The activities of Mukunda are so potent that simply by hearing of them, one immediately associates with the Lord. For a person who constantly and very eagerly hears narrations of the Lord's powerful activities, the absolute truth, the personality of Godhead, in the form of sound vibrations, enters within his heart and cleanses it of all contamination.
who will take up the story where Pallad Maharaj is instructing his demoniac schoolmates. Previously, um, he had two demoniac tutors, Sunda and Amarka, were teaching him how to become a ruthless diplomat, how to gain mastery over one's enemies, how to control the subjects, various types of diplomatic maneuvers, economics, how to amass the most amount of wealth by hook or by crook. And Prahlad Maharaj completely rejected all of this. He had been instructed previously by Narada Muni and see, sounding miraculous to us, but as Krishna says, if you become, if you're conscious of me, you will cross over the, all the obstacles of conditional life by my grace. What are the four greatest obstacles? of material life, birth, death, disease, and old age. So we hear how a devotee, a pure devotee conquers death, but a devotee, he also conquers birth, which is a very unpleasant situation. It's described in authorized Shastras that at the seventh month period, consciousness is awakened. And one feels how inconvenient it is to be in an airtight, dark, environment, completely dependent on the food and habits of the mother. And what to speak of these days where my right, my choice, abortion, you know, the sutures will come in and just rip your limbs to pieces. You know, some of these foolish people even say that, you know, uh, one is not entitled, one is not considered having a right to life until they're self-sufficient. What does that mean? When you're 16 years old, you can be aborted? Total nonsense. This idea is complete atheism. It's complete demoniac denial of God and his um, method and his procedure, how we take our birth in this material world and how we are called, how this human life is meant for cultivating our ultimate salvation, our ultimate happiness. So he was a spotlessly pure devotee and within the womb of his mother, now interesting, how did Hiranyakashipu become so powerful that he took over the entire universe? And we see how demons try to maneuver to create a situation where they control the whole economy, the whole medical industry, the whole political thing, you know? So imagine a demon so powerful that he can control every planet, all different grades of heavenly, middle, and lower um, persons living in various realms control, uh, you know, the um, natural phenomena and completely suppress all religious activities. So he performed a very, very severe austerity. No one becomes powerful. No one becomes influential unless they perform tapasya previously. So tapasya, divya, what is it? Uh, once you, Lord Rishabde, once you perform divine austerity, that one can re regain devotional service. But that same tapasya, for some demoniac and political end, like they say, money is the root of all evil, not really. Money is the goddess of fortune. And if put in the hands, money put in the hands of a godly person who'll use it for a proper person. You put that money in the hand of a demon and he'll use it to create something that will be very harmful to all species of life. So while this demon, Hiranyakashipu, was performing austerities, the demigods or the godly persons knew that something is up and we're going to be in trouble in due course of time. Hiranyakashipu's wife was pregnant with Prahlad Marj. And they, in their own mind, as we were saying, we think that the son is gonna be like the father. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So they thought we're gonna arrest his mother and not make an abortion, wait for the child to be born, then we're gonna kill the child. Narada Muni appeared, which is not as bad. Well, it's all bad, right? So Narada Muni appeared on the scene and Narada Muni is universally respected as a great personality. Whatever he says is true. He said, 
The child in this womb is a great personality, a spotless, topmost devotee of the Lord. You will not be able to kill him. And then Narada Muni took charge of Hiranyakashipu's mother. That's another lesson or extraordinary thing. Such a personality as Narada Muni is above mundane attraction. He gave shelter to Hiranyakashipu's wife with a pregnant Prahlad in her womb and instructed her in Bhagavad Dharma, pure devotional service, spiritual knowledge, but it was actually meant for Prahlad who heard very, very carefully in the woman, remembered those instructions. So Prahlad uh, was asked previously, what is the best thing that you have learned? Thinking that he would say politics, diplomacy, ruthless, you know, you know, economic cutthroat dealings. But he said, the best thing that I have learned is hearing, chanting, remembering, worshiping the Lord, surrendering the nine processes of devotional service. That's the best thing that he has learned from his real teacher, Narada Muni, not these false demoniac teachers, just like some of us who has the experience, we go to school, high school, college, and they teach us, this doesn't, what? And we reject it. Because it's not real knowledge. It's vidya and avidya. So then he was saying, okay, you better teach him very good. Don't let any Vaishnav spies come in and try to pollute him. And then he instructs like this his, to his demoniac class friends when there was leisure time, when the teachers were away. And... His classmates, five-year-old boys, asked him, where did you learn all this knowledge? And this is a summary of what he said, of his uh, the learning that he received from Narada Muni. Every living entity, especially in human society, must be interested in spiritual realization from the very beginning of life. When human beings are children, they should be taught that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the worshipable deity for everyone. One should not be very much interested in material enjoyment. Instead, one should be satisfied with whatever material profits are easily obtainable. And because the duration of one's life is very short and not fixed, one should utilize every moment for spiritual advancement. One may wrongly think in the beginning of our lives, let us enjoy material facilities. And in old age, we may become Krishna conscious. There was a cartoon or a, um, a progression that little kids running around and then teenagers, boys and girls, too young to think of Krishna. Then, you know, you know, you know, family man and, you know, you know, full job commuting, too busy to think of Krishna. Then retired, all like kind of beat up and, and hunched over, too tired to think of Krishna. And the next, a coffin and a funeral and a tombstone, rest in peace, too late to think of Krishna. Such materialistic thoughts are always useless because in the old age, one cannot be trained in the spiritual way of life. Therefore, from the very beginning, one should engage in devotional service. Material education is infected by the three modes of nature, but spiritual education, for which there is a great need in human society, is transcendental. Prahlad disclosed the secret of how he had received instructions from Narada Muni. After... Uh, his class friends heard this, they also became learned in advance and took to devotional service. So, when everyone in the school was converted, the teachers, greatly fearful for their own lives, because they wanted to explain the situation as it actually was, so Arani Kashipu wouldn't have them executed Rani Kashipu became very, very angry. And he brought Prahlad Maharaj before him. And he said, you rascal, you were trying to minimize my value as if you were better than me at controlling the senses. There's people who have completely uncontrolled mind and senses you know, completely invested in the material world, they're under delusion, think that they completely have it together. I'm making all this money, I'm so famous, and you people just chanting Hare Krishna, wearing these like clothes, you're all just crazy brainwashed people. They have no idea 
that pure devotees are, are situated in the topmost knowledge in their mind and senses. Controlled means completely fixed on the absolute truth. They are in the topmost position. I therefore understand that you desire to die at my hands because this type of nonsensical talk is indulged in by those who are about to die. Pallad Maharaj's preaching was indirectly effective. And Rani Kashipu wasn't going to change, but he was uh, hastening a very great benediction for Rani Kashipu was that for because of Rani Kashipu's excessive jealousy of Krishna and his devotee, he was inviting the Sringadev to come and kill him very quickly. So when we see very bad demoniac activity and it's reached the point beyond control, we should know Paritranaya Sadunam Vinishaya Traduskritam. The Lord will appear. Extraordinary cases as himself or um, he is the controller of the material nature. He will create a situation where the demoniac activity and the demons will be curtailed and suppressed. And the sadhunam, the sadhus, they will be uplifted and enlivened. So Krishna's incarnation in the Kali Yuga is at every moment through the chanting of the Mukya Mul Prakriti, the supreme root of all transcendental sound, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The Yuga Dharma for everyone in this age of Kali, anywhere, everywhere, and at all times, is to take shelter of Krishna and propagate the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Almost unfortunate, Prahlad. You have always described a supreme being other than me. You see people who are engaged in trying to reset this world the way that they speak. There is no God in control. We are God. And we will completely rewire everything in accord with our schemes and plans. A supreme being who is above everything, who is the controller of everyone, and who is all pervading. But where is he? If he is everywhere, then why is he not present before me in this pillar? So Hiranya Kashipu, he saw that Prahlad Marge was completely unafraid and he acknowledged, yes, my Lord is present everywhere, even in the pillar of an assembly hall, like a great Corinthian, Greek or Roman pillar, gigantic pillar. Where is your God? Is he everywhere? Because you are speaking so much nonsense, I shall now sever your head from your body. Now let me see your most worshipful God come to protect you. I want to see it. Demons always think that the God of the devotees is fictitious. They think that there is no God and that the so-called religious feeling of a devotee, of devotion to God is but an opiate, a kind of illusion like the illusion derived from LSD and opium. Or just plain unintelligent sentimentality. Hiranyakashipu did not believe Pallad Maharaj when Pallad asserted that his Lord is present everywhere because Hiranyakashipu as a typical demon. Their thinking is not very uh, original or variegated. It's the same old Thing, maybe in a different package. As a typical demon, he was convinced that there was no God that could protect Prahlad. He felt encouraged to kill his son. He challenged the idea that for the devotee, the devotee is always protected by the Supreme Lord. What did he do next? Being obsessed with great anger, Hiranyakashipu, who was very great in bodily strength, thus chastised 
his exalted devotee son to lie with harsh words, cursing him again and again. Hiranyakashipu took up his sword. So everything is about the pillar. God is in the pillar, right? Is he very angry? He got up from the royal throne and with great anger, he struck his fist against the column. There's no God in this pillar. What happened next? Then from within the pillar came a fearful sound. That sound, other Vaishnav um, commentary was like hundreds, unlimited numbers of very powerful thunderclaps all at the same time. And we hear like a, a tremendous thunder. It's like, oh, maybe it'll knock something down. So this sound was so voluminous, so powerful, so loud, so unprecedented that even the demigods in the heavenly planets they became greatly afraid and they thought this is the end of the universe and now our planets are going to be destroyed. While showing his extraordinary prowess, Hiranyakashipu, who desired to kill his own son, heard that wonderful tumultuous sound which had never before been heard. Upon hearing that sound, the other leaders of the demons, his henchmen, were afraid. We see in the fall of the Third Reich that Adolf Hitler, right up to like the last 45 minutes of his life before the Russians closed in on his Fuhrer bunker, would not heed the advice of his closest generals. It's over. So the generals, they understood. So his henchmen understood. Not Hiranyakashipu. He's going to fight to the bitter end. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, I am the syllable om in the Vedic mantras. I am the sound and ether and ability of man. Prabhupada says that the preliminary appearance of Lord Nishringadev in this fearsome sound was enough to establish his supremacy and absolute authority. To prove that the statement of his servant, Prahlad Maharaj, was substantial. In other words, to prove that the Supreme Lord is present Everywhere, even within the pillar of an assembly hall, the Supreme Personality of God at Hari exhibited a wonderful form never before seen. Why half man, half lion? Because what the result of Hiranyakashipu's terrible tapasya and austerity, he took the benediction from who he thought was the supreme entity in this universe, Lord Brahma, he first make me immortal. I can't give you immortality. Even me with a lifespan of 311 trillion, 40 billion years, am not immortal. How can I give you? Okay, so we'll make a circumvention. I won't be killed by any man or animal. So he's about to be killed by combining a man and a, and a lion together. The form was neither that of a man nor that of a lion. Thus the Lord appeared in his wonderful form in the assembly. Well, here's a uh, printing of that painting, which Hansa Rupa Babu was telling you, the original is in Prabhupada Museum. While Arani Kashipuk looked all around to find the source of that sound. So first comes sound, practice chanting Hare Krishna, then the form will come. Nama, Rupa, Guna, and ultimately pastimes, Leela. First is Nama. Where is the source of that sound? Looking all around, he couldn't ask it. Then the wonderful form of the Lord came out of the pillar. Still puffed up, Hiranyakashipu wondered, what is this creature that is half man and half lion? And there's a description of the form of Lord Nishringadev, very detailed. We're running out of time, but we can't end the class without coming to the piece de resistance, the ripping of the demon to pieces. Lord, he's, he's thinking to himself, murmuring, Lord Vishnu has made this plan to kill me, but who can fight with me? I'm so great. 
So then thinking like this, he took up his club and sword and attacked him like an elephant. So the analogy is appropriate because in the jungle, the two greatest beasts are the lion and the elephant. And when they fight, invariably, and most of the time, the elephant loses and the lion wins. Just as a small insect falls forcibly into a fire and the insignificant creature becomes invisible, when Hiranyakashipu attacked the Lord, it was full of effulgence. Hiranyakashipu became invisible. So Hiranyakashipu uh, fight, fought with the Sringadev, and the Sringadev caught him, seemingly let him go. The demigods watching from behind the clouds in the heavenly planets, you know, just eagerly waiting, you know, kill him, kill him. When Hiranyakashi, they were afraid when he let, when the Sringadev let him slip from his hands because if Hiranyakashi Pu saw, because all along they're feigning, yes, sir, obedience, sir, very good, sir. But when they saw they were looking forward to his death with great, great anticipation, that he, that Hiranyakashi Pu would take great revenge upon them. So this was all, uh, to play. And Prabhupada said, sometimes we wonder, how is it that someone is getting away with great sinful activities and doing all types of terrible things, you know, being rich and famous? How is that? And that's, so to speak, to give them enough rope to hang themselves. When a sinful man enjoys material facilities, foolish people sometimes think, how is this happening? By the will of the Supreme, a sinful man is sometimes given the chance to enjoy the world as if he were not under the clutches of material nature, just so that he may be fool. He's given a chance to play, exactly like Hiranyi Kashipu, but when he was, uh, he was destined to be ultimately killed by Lord Nishringadev, but just to see the fun. Making a loud, shrill sound of laughter, the Supreme Personality of God, Ed Narayan, who was extremely strong and powerful, captured Irani Kashipu, was protecting himself with sword and shield, leaving no gaps open. With the speed of a hawk, Irani Kashipu moved sometimes in the sky and sometimes on the earth, his eyes closed because of the fear of Nishringadev's laughter. Imagine what the laughter of Lord Nishringadev must have been like. One laughs like this when, it is, when one is in a big fight, knowing that they are going to win. Remembering the atrocities of the person thus being subdued. As a snake captures a mouse or Garuda captures a very venomous snake, Lord Nishringadev captured Hiranyakashipu, who could not be pierced even by the thunderbolt of King Indra. That's the king of heaven, chief demigod of the heavenly planets, a thunderbolt. As Hiranyakashipu moved his limbs here and there and all around, very much afflicted at being captured, Lord Nishringadev placed the demon on his lap, supporting him with his thighs. And in the doorway of the assembly hall, the Lord very easily tore the demon to pieces with the nails of his hand. He received the benediction that he would not die on the land or in the sky. Therefore, to keep the promise intact, he pierced him on his lap which is neither land nor sky. That he would not die either during the day or the night. Why are we fasting till dusk? That killed him in the evening, which is the end of day and the beginning of night, but it's neither day nor night, right in between. He would not die from any weapon or be killed by any person, dead or alive. Therefore, just to keep the word of Lord Brahma, he pierced him with his fingernails, shila tanka nakala, yay, which are not weapons. Or sometimes people grow like really long fingernails and then they, they claw you with them. Nails can be called dead, but at the same time, they can be alive because they're growing. To keep all the Brahma's benedictions intact, Lord Nishringade paradoxically, but very easily, killed the great demon. So then the henchmen, the whole army came, 
And Lord Nishringadev expanded his arms and just like we're picking them up and crushing their heads and ripping them to pieces just with his fingernails. Then when the supremacy of the Lord was completely recognized and no one came forward to challenge him, he sat down on the throne created by Hiranyakashipu, roaring with anger. No one could pacify the Lord ultimately except Prahlad Maharaj, who offered extraordinary prayers to Lord Nishringadev, instructed for all devotees. So this is a very special day for all of us in this material world. Perhaps we could say, especially at these times when what's going to happen is kind of frightening and uncertain, we should pray to Lord Krishna. Actually, Prahlad Maharaj, he concluded his teachings by saying, to see Govinda, Everywhere is the ultimate goal of life. So Prahlad Maharaj's worshipful deity is Sri Govinda. And that Sri Govinda transformed himself into Lord Nishringadev. So let us all be blessed and fortified and enthused and enlivened from this most glorious day, which actually merges with the Purnima. Today is the 480th anniversary of the beloved form of Sri Sri Radha Raman, who is understood to be the combination of the three most worshipful deities of ultimate ascent to the topmost goal of life, Madan Mohan, Govindaji, and Radha Gopinath. So those of you who've been to Vrindavan have been to this most important temple, self-manifesting form of Tri Banga Krishna, Radha Raman, from around Shalagram Shiva. So it is 7.30, we're gonna stop on time. Making an announcement. There is a car with a license plate. What is the license plate? Is that Maryland? Z-E-T-2-1-3-0, you're blocking. White Jeep, you're blocking somebody from leaving or taking up a parking place. One, two, or all of the above. Please go take care of your car. Thank you very much. You can take darshan of Shishi Radha Govinda, Lord Nishringade. Please come to Harinam Sankatan and show that you love us. Body bold.